Thank you for joining us on Nationwide or coming to you live from the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Ruth Aguele. Now let's begin with legislative matters. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, says the National Assembly will ensure adequate budgetary provision for the development of areas affected by banditry and other forms of criminality in Zamfara State. He was speaking at an interactive session with stakeholders in the security management of the state. Correspondent Haliru Mohammed Umar has more. Zamfara State has over the years suffered from unbanditry, kidnappings and cattle rustling, which resulted in monumental loss of lives and property. This prompted the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Baja Biamila, to visit the state for an interface with stakeholders with a view to finding lasting solution to the lingering crisis. We're here simply on a mission. A peacekeeping mission. We're here for nothing else other than to restore and thereafter maintain peace in Zamfara. The speaker commended the state governor for the peace initiative adopted by his administration, which according to him is yielding positive result. Zamfara state governor Bella Muhammad noted that arrangements have been concluded for the establishment of three Ruga settlements and other infrastructures as a means of restoring peace and stability in the state. I would like to use this opportunity to appeal to Mr. Speaker to come to the head of the president in liaison with the leadership of the Senate for the immediate release of the special federal government intervention fund of 10 billion as passed through a resolution of ex Senate. Leaders of the warring parties who spoke at the event also embraced each other as a mark of reaffirming their resolve to give peace a chance. The speaker had during the visit handed over some released captives to the chairman, Zamfara State Council of Chiefs for further action. He also donated two trailers of assorted rice for onward distribution to IDPs and other victims of banditry attacks in the state. In Gusau, Haliru Muhammad Umar. NTA News. The Nigerian Army has approved the postings and redeployment of officers to reinvigorate the force. A statement by Acting Director of Army Public Relations, Conan Sagir Musa, indicates that the postings include the appointment of the newly promoted Lieutenant General Lamidi at the Oshun, the former Chief of Training and Operations, now redeployed as Chief of Policy and Plans of the Army. Others are Major General A.O. Shodunke from Army Headquarters Department of Army Standards and Evaluation appointed as Chief of Defence Logistics, Defence Headquarters, and 16 other Major Generals. Similarly, Brigadier General K.A. Kazir, Army Headquarters Department of Projects and Programs, is now appointed as Acting Executive Director of Nigerian Army Farms and Ranches Limited, including 11 other Brigadier Generals. Colonel R.C. Ime, Defence Headquarters appointed Assistant Director, Army Physical Training at the three Division Physical Training Group, JOS, while Colonel M.O. Erebulu appointed Commander 2 Provost Group, Ibadan. Lieutenant Colonel S.A. Abimbola, Nigerian Army Operations Center at Army Headquarters, has now been appointed Commanding Officer 343 Artillery Regiment, LLA. Lieutenant Colonel S.M. Ahmed from 375 Artillery Regiment, Baga, is now Commanding Officer 332 Artillery Regiment, Shedam, amongst others. In another development, President Muhammad Buhari on the 9th of July 2019 approved a special promotion for three officers in recognition of their hard work and efforts in the fight against insurgency. Now, in this special report, defense correspondent Ismail Musa highlights their individual contributions to their operations. 
The success of any given military operation, among other things, depends on the commitment and rules of officers and soldiers deployed. Officers like Lieutenant General Lamidia Dioshun is one who sacrificed and exploit were crucial at a time the Northeast Nigeria was under the heat of the insurgency. Your responsibility is not only to sit down in your camp, but to go out, patrol on vehicles, patrol on foot. Then, as the general officer commanding 7th Division Meduguri, troops he led were credited to have played vital role in counter-insurgency operations, recording victories, recovering and liberating people held hostage and areas captured by Boko Haram. This led to his appointment as the first commander, multinational joint tax force in Chad, where he aggressively denied terrorists access and ability to hibernate within border towns of the affected countries. Major General Abdul Malik Bulamabiu is another officer who established a rapid deployment force that always made proactive response to threats in parts of Borno State. Several young officers and soldiers sacrificed and wisdom have contributed to the degrading of the Boko Haram terrorist group. Some of them still serving while others have paid the supreme price. Among those still serving is Captain Abubakar Njibrin, whose gallantry and subsequent recognition accord hope and encouragement to other serving young officers. You will also agree with me that we would not be celebrating these elevations if the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces is not who he is in his objectivity and in total support of the efforts of the service chiefs. I must also commend the chief of army staff for his leadership and his readiness to accommodate an officer of equal rank. The announcement of a special presidential recognition and promotion for these officers following recommendations from the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tupu Bratai, did not come to many as surprise, as security has been among the major priorities of the Buhari administration. Ismail Musa, NTA News. Thank you, Ismail. And now to judiciary. The presidential election petition court this Monday resumes hearing of the petition of the People's Democratic Party and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar. The court adjourned last Friday as a result of alleged attack on the witnesses of the petitioners who were coming from Zamfara State. An allegation the Zamfara State Police Command has refuted. So far, the petitioners have called 37 witnesses out of the 400 they proposed. The petitioners continue calling the witnesses this Monday. And the Action Democratic Party says it has reviewed its action plan towards its successful outing in the November 16 governorship elections in Kogi and Bayelsa states. National chairman of the party, Yabagi Yusuf Sani, stated this at a media briefing in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. As political parties again get busier with activities towards the November 16 governorship elections in Kogi and Bayelsa states, the Action Democratic Party priding itself as a credible alternative for elective office seekers to actualize their ambitions has promised a level playing ground within the ambit of laws and extant rules. Releasing the election timetable, the ADP national chairman explains that various committees have been put in place to ensure that the party improves upon its achievements in the 2019 general elections. The Action Democratic Party is determined to provide deliberate, systematic, consistent policies and programs to harness and develop Nigeria's human capital. Hence, our party's best to participate in the governorship race in both With Nigeria endowed with tremendous natural and human resources, Yabagisani restates that the forthcoming governorship's target pool is another opportunity for Nigeria to surpass its improvement in the 2019 general elections. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Legal and research assistants in the country are now being exposed to the use of information communication technology tools to conduct research and aid judges in taking judicial decisions. Olabo de Arewa reports that the capacity training workshop is an initiative of the National Judicial Institute. 
you can't get everything in the library. So every, everything is now global, based on ICT. So it has really been, it has really been of help in conducting research. How I will achieve this is by giving this program apt attention and practicalizing the teachings. Chibuzo Chikelu and Mudupe Oshundino are legal research officers working with the Judiciary of Delta and Ekiti States. They are participating in this training on automated legal research methods as key to efficient jurisprudence in Nigeria. Before now, the conduct of legal research in the various courts in the country had been largely manual, slow and cumbersome. The acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Muhammad, who was represented by one of the justices of the Supreme Court, Justice Olukayade Ariwala, however, believes that the cause of justice will be better served when digital tools are employed. Mobile phones today have become mobile computers, and you can get the latest information at your fingertips. I encourage you to utilize these tools for efficacy in the discharge of your duties. As research assistants, your actions or inactions speed up dispensation of justice or delay it as the case may be. And for this reason, you must at all times exemplify good character that is becoming of your role and status. The workshop would address procedures in legal research, judicial precedents, evaluating electronically generated evidence and emerging threats in cryptocurrency transactions. Chibuzo Chikelu, Modukpo Shudino, and other participants are expected to lead the quest for an ICT compliant judiciary in Abuja Labodarewa. NT News. Over 500 political thugs in Bauchi State have surrendered their arms and announced acts of criminality. Commissioner of Police Bauchi State Command Habu Sani mentioned this on the occasion of formal renouncing of the thugs at the police headquarters in Bauchi. Maria Mubala reports. The thugs, popularly known as Sarasuka, have in recent times constituted nuisance before during and after elections in most communities and endangered lives of many citizens of the state. With 295 of the repentant youths killed in various trades, 170 of them are unskilled, but can impact positively to nation building if gainfully employed. Bauchi State Commissioner of Police, Habusani Ahmed, while receiving the thug, say the command is drastically reducing the speed of Sarasuka, armed robbery and kidnapping for the good of its citizens. The door is still open to those who are yet to repent, to see this in where they should turn the same line. Representative of Bauchi State Governor, Chief of Staff, Government House, al Haji Abubakar Kari, and other prominent people in the state call on government and non-governmental organizations to come up with programs that will assist the youth and make them employed. And the people that the governor is uh, employing today as his advisors I age are also you. So you can count on the governor to help you, inshallah, to be better people for the future, inshallah. They advise the youth to seek forgiveness from the Almighty in Bauchi, Maria Mubala, NCA News. We'll take a pause from this end as we join Michael Lale in Lagos to be our guide for stories from that end. Hello, Michael. The ad hoc committee set up by the Senate to investigate the cause of the Jegun fire has promised thorough investigation into the matter, saying the committee's recommendations will help the federal government to adopt far-reaching approach to vandalism. Leader of the committee, Senator Ibrahim Gubir, said this when the senators visited Governor Babajide Sawulu at the State House, Ikeja. Nusa Osula reports. The Senate had earlier asked its adult committee probing the recent River State explosion to extend its scope to the pipeline explosion which occurred recently in Ijegun. As a follow-up to this, the Senate's ad hoc committee met with Governor Son Wolu to discuss and profess solutions. The report we want to give is to find a lasting solution to this problem, not only in the Egyptian level state, but in the whole federation. And these must be put to check 
and we must look for a way by way of legislation or collaborative effort with the executive. Governor Sonwolu commended the ad hoc committee for the visit and assured them of the continuous support of the state government in putting an end to the menace of pipeline vandalism as well as other unwholesome activities by vandals in the state. This is not the first time, it's not the second time, and it's so unfortunate. Um, last year, a similar incident happened. Early this year, a similar incident happened. Now again, it has happened. We have complained severally to the community, to the security operatives, that something serious needs to be done. Nigerians were urged to remain vigilant and report activities of vandals in their various communities to security agencies. In Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NCA News. Security tips and strategy for safety in case of emergency were some of the issues raised at a conference on the future of security and safety in Nigeria. Nemrit Nina Musa reports that the forum provided an opportunity for the Security and Safety Electronic Marketers Association to enlighten the public on its activities. The conference, which has as theme, Future of Security and Safety in Nigeria, seeks to educate security electronic marketers and the public on innovative ideas and techniques to employ in terms of emergencies. Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Obafemi Hamzat, who was represented by the Director General of Lagos Safety Commission, Hakim Dixon, said the state government will continue to demonstrate its support for such initiatives to achieve a safe society. As the fifth largest economy in Africa, coupled with increasing population, Lagos State cannot afford to compromise on security and safety. Discussions at the conference unanimously agreed that the deployment of state-of-the-art security equipment by marketers should be complemented with requisite skills and knowledge of the technologically driven gadgets. Siman is creating a database to have them in oneness that at the click of a button you can have an access to those who are doing the business of security and safety in Nigeria. Organizers of the event are optimistic that more of such conferences and trainings will help build a network of security and safety professionals for promoting excellence and influencing the future. The aim of this association is to protect, promote and advance the security and safety industry through seminars, exhibition, and training. There was an exhibition of electronic gadgets in Lagos, Nerut Nina Musa, NTA News. Access to proper medical care is what every society wish for. Why some have access to such, others have to travel far to meet that need. To bring soccer to residents of Ikota in Lagos, members of St. James Anglican Church organized a free medical outreach in the area. Hingino John Adams reports. For residents of Ikota, this general medical outreach is what they have been yearning for as it accorded them the privilege of accessing medical facilities and drugs without dipping their hands into their pockets. 80-year-old Mama Margaret Isaiah, among other senior citizens, defied the weakness associated with old age to partake in the exercise. I give a good with me today. I, I, I'm free. I feel free today. Some of the health care providers on ground said routine free medical outreach helps the less privileged in adopting preventive measures against some ailments and identifying problems early. The objective of the health, health talk is essentially to tell people, okay, well, these are the ways you prevent cancer from happening in the first place. So this is how to live healthy and then um, uh, this is also how to recognize it on time. Reverend O.K. Ikeri speaks on the essence of the exercise. We have to play our own role, you know, and bring hope into the host community. At the end of the program, Mama Margaret Isaiah and others who benefited from the free medical outreach went home in high spirits. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. That's a contribution from Lagos Nationwide continues in Abuja after the break. Stay tuned.
enjoy the best of African football as NTA, Africa's largest television network and hotspots, Nigeria's foremost sports production and marketing company, bring you all 52 matches of the Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019 live from June 21 to July 19, 2019. Yes, all 52 games will hit your screens in crystal clear digital quality. It's your guarantee of a memorable viewing experience and a wonderful cost-effective opportunity for corporate Nigeria to reach tens of millions of Nigerians. For sponsorship and commercial support, contact Abubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. Hot Sports, masters of the game. NTA, you can't beat the rich. The African continent of free trade, recently signed by President Muhammad Buhari, is a thrust this week on NTA Tuesday Live. What are the potentials in the continent of free trade? Find out on NTA Tuesday Live at 10.30 p.m. The program promises to be informative, educative and incisive. Don't miss it. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready, in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. The entire family of Adegbite cordially invites the general public to the 80th birthday Thanksgiving service of our father, Moses Adedino Adegbite, JP, which will come up as follows. Date, Wednesday, 17 July 2019. Venue, Omoyele Methodist Church, Nigeria. FDT, Afidio Local Government, or your state. Time, 12 noon. You are all invited to this important celebration. Bishop STV Adegbite, Bishop Abayomi Adebite announces for the family. Thank you for staying tuned. Nigeria will need to update her obsolete business laws to clearly define the legal framework that will earn investors' confidence again. Now, this was the view when experts critically discussed financing options for infrastructure development on NTS flagship program Good Morning Nigeria. They applauded the present administration's visible ongoing infrastructure development where the bulk of borrowing has been developed. Lydia Sampson reports. Infrastructure is at the heart of every thriving economy, and Nigeria experts see as a yearning gap in infrastructure development. Over the years, Nigeria has had to journey into debt markets to raise funds for bridging the gap, but at between 70 to 75 percent deficit of national stock. You look at the other options. We can't afford to print money. Yeah. We can also not afford to to raise uh, taxes at this point in time. Okay. So what appears, what would seem um, feasible for now is um, you know, going to borrow. But the, of course the question um, for me is um, uh, you know, whether what we have done so far uh, you know, uh, have been optimal. I am not perturbed with the level of our borrowings now because our reality is either of two. Either we, we, we remain where we are and we, and we continue to live piecemeal, as it were, or we take a revolutionary action, be more committed, transparent, borrow money, and deploy it as appropriate you know, to infrastructure so that we can trigger faster economic development momentum. This readily brings to mind the need to take revolutionary action that include pegging time frames for development and payment of external loans. There's another model that the government can also uh, utilize called the regulated asset base model. That model also can be utilized by the government because it ensures and also uh, ga guarantees the uh, investor uh, the rate of return on their investment and again is also backed by the legislation 
which also ensures that the investor recoups his sunk in investments in infrastructure. Demonstration of strong political will, uh, which, is, which is really very important, and then we must be able to show that we are transparent, no corruption. So there are this, these are the kind of things that we require to have in place, and then uh, you will see investment flowing from every, uh, I mean, uh, nook and crannies of the world. The guests also suggested exploring the build, operate and transfer model as well as public-private partnership, which they agree, if properly harnessed, will significantly slash Nigeria's infrastructure deficit. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. And from infrastructure to safety, the need for a rapid expansion of road networks across the country to cope with the increase in vehicular density on Nigerian roads is very significant for safety. The court marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Boboye Oyeyemi, stated this when he paid a working visit to the Ogun State Sector Command in Abiyakuta. Mohamed Adebowale reports that a court marshal also urged personnel to show high level of professionalism and commitment while on duty. Present at the familiarization visit were regular marshals and special marshals of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Ogun State Command, as well as other stakeholders. The visit also afforded officers of the command the opportunity to have first-hand information on series of programs embarked upon by the leadership of FRSA to make their job easy. In a speech, the Corps Marshal Boboye Oyeyemi canvassed for support and collaboration of all to achieve smooth and safe motoring on Nigerian roads. What we have witnessed is that there's increase in vehicular density and there's no expansion for the road network. That's the major problem. All these road networks past 1970s, 80s, we have not witnessed real expansion. The FRC boss, while calling on personnel to show high level of commitment and professionalism and as well shown on ethical standards, appreciated newsmen for their support to FRC, which by extension is promoting safety. We ask for understanding and additional change of all road users towards effective road traffic management in the country. If all road users can comply with the basic traffic rules and regulations, it will be easier. The command has also been to your directive for effectiveness along the Shagamu, Jago, or Benin corridor to ensure that we achieve smooth motoring along the Lagos the call marshal also commissioned a 60 kva mechano power generating set donated to the Ogun state sector command courtesy frsc special marshal for the confidence of the uh, command here to ease their performances in abelkuta mohammed adibawali nta news the prevalence of drug and substance abuse in Nigeria cannot be overemphasized as it is a menace which has become a national issue. This was the view of speakers during an outreach to sensitize the public on the harmful effects of drug abuse in Abuja. Toyibat Anifowashi reports that the outreach was put together by a non-governmental organization as part of the organization's contribution towards eradicating the menace in the country. Drug and substance abuse is often linked with antisocial behaviors, which is counterproductive in any society. A report from a nationwide survey carried out by the National Bureau of Statistics with support from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime provides a robust data on the prevalence of drug abuse in Nigeria. In the federal capital territory, there are speculations that the dangerous riding habit of some motorcyclists can be linked to drug and substance abuse. This is why Bridge and Bond Initiative is sensitizing motorcyclists and members of the public on the effect of drug abuse. The issue of drug abuse is a national problem. We have chosen um, FHA Lugbe as one of our first uh, takeoff ground. We are going to secondary schools and other places, public places, IDP, we were in IDP camp with the NDLA officials and all that to continue to preach this message about drug abuse. And the choice of FHA Lube is very strategic to us. And we are paying particular attention to the Okada riders and the people who ply Okada here. We are trying to see how we can sensitize the society, how we can bring it to the closet. The outreach 
attracted its target audience with fascinating presentations. We are used to advise our friends. Organizers expect that such outreach will go a long way in reducing drug and substance abuse in Nigeria. Taiba and NTA News. Having a sick person in a family makes parents upset or traumatized, depending on the illness. Now, more traumatized are mothers whose children have incurable disorders. In this report, however, Abdullahi Mustafa tells us good news of imagined regenerative treatment of autism, cerebral palsy, and related disorders. Among common neurological disorders are autism, cerebral palsy, and Down syndrome. Sufferers become helpless with parents and loved ones traumatized. This is for the belief that there is no cure for such conditions. We care that children with Down syndrome by teaching them and training them how to do something themselves. However, it seems many families will soon have a reason to be happy, thanks to the discovery of stem cell therapy. It can help one live a near normal life. What we do is we take stem cells from the child itself. We put in a needle into the bone just above the hip bone, the pelvic bone, take out bone marrow, separate the stem cells and put it back through a single needle into the lower back spinal fluid. Also developed are methods of advancing education and learning. And after the treatment, you need, once you've healed the one side, you need something that will help that child to go on and get better and better and make a growth and a progression. What remains now is the domestication of the stem cell therapy to make it more accessible. We need institutions to buy into it. We need to also do assessment, we need assessment. We also need to get the states as partners and the federal government. Making these advances work will certainly give hope of better living of sufferers of neurological disorders. In Kanu, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. The chairman and CEO of Nigerians and Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Arawa, has responded to the complaints of Nigerians in the diaspora about the fee charged by the National Identity Management Commission for the registration and issuance of identification numbers for legal Nigerians resident in various countries abroad. Joy Siago tells us more. Apart from the quality of service rendered by some Nigerian embassies in the delivery of passports to Nigerians abroad, the fee charged by the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, to register and issue unique national identification numbers to qualified citizens and legal residents outside Nigeria was a major issue begging for a cheaper. I want to ensure they're asking pay a little amount. Among others. One of the things we try to promote at the Kaduna Center is for the students as Christians and Muslims to do things together. The Kaduna State Deputy Governor Hajia Hadiza Balarabi, former Governor of the State Senator Ahmed Makarfi, former Minister of Finance Hajia Zainab Ahmad, and other speakers at the event loaded the initiative of the founders of the center. With an understanding of what both religions are, you know, their the, the teachings uh, and propagating this message, you know, from this crop of graduates to the people, you know, within communities, I think uh, will foster an understanding of uh, issues and will reduce the tension that arises, you know, from uh, things that have to do with religious. Peace is common denominator to all of us. No matter the abuse, no matter what we are rich or poor, literate or not literate, as the case may be, we all need peace. Part of your training would include special attention on reconciliation as well as psychosocial support and also the restoration of our value systems. The Kaduna Center for the Study of Christian Muslim Relations was established in 2004 to minimize misconceptions and promote harmony among adherents of the two faiths. In Kaduna, I am Hassan Lawan Shatima, NTA News.
and Chairman, Governing Board of the Nigerian National Merit Award, Professor Shekaru Yakubu Aku, has reiterated the Board's commitment towards rewarding Nigerians who distinguish themselves in innovations and inventions that are geared towards national development. Professor Aku stated this at the 2019 Second Award Winners Lecture held in Ahmadabella University, Zaria. Sagir Muhammad Awal reports. Part of the steps taken by the Board of the Nigerian National Merit Award to promote intellectual and academic excellence for consideration is the liaison with academic, professional and research institutions in the country. The 2019 Second Award Winners Lecture provides an avenue for the winner to share his intellectual experience in a lecture titled 70 plus of drama reminiscences as actor, playwright, and connoisseur of drama. This National Merit Award is one of the most honest organization which they offer. You can't just by Uluru get, uh, get the award. It is no exaggeration to say that Professor Umaru Baladapi is a man to be reckoned with other speakers at the lecture described the award winner as an outstanding Nigeria who contributed to literary work in Zaria. I'm Sagir Muhammad Awal, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Kaduna. It's back to Ruth in Abuja for more stories on Nationwide. Thank you, Rukaya, and welcome back to Abuja. And from Kaduna, we move to Bauchi State, where a committee set up by the House of Representatives to investigate the feud in Bauchi State House of Assembly over the parallel election of Speaker by two factions has arrived Bauchi with the resolve to do justice to the parties involved. Mohammed Ibn Mohammed reports that the committee, led by Representative Musa Serikin Adar, paid a visit to Governor Bala Mohammed. Sequel to the crisis in the Bochi State House of Assembly over the election of Speaker by two factions on the day of inauguration, the member representing Shiregi at the federal constituency, Kanifogu, raised a motion on the floor of the House calling on his colleagues to intervene in the matter. After extensive deliberation, the House set up a committee under the leadership of Representative Musa Ada to look into the matter. We know the importance of representation. So by the act of what happened, the good people of Bochi State have been deprived of good representation as the assembly has been closed for almost a month now after inauguration. With this, I call on everybody in the state to feel free to appear before us. Certainly, we are coming here is salutary to us as people of Bochi, but certainly a shame to us as distinguished senators. The only state where you have two distinguished senators managing the affairs of the state we will never, we will never in our culture and in our tutelage we undermine the importance and the respect the parliament has. This crisis has hit a toll, put on hold legislative proceedings at the Bochi State House of Assembly. In Bochi, Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad, NTA News. Thank you, Mohamed. Trees and forests play an essential role in mitigating the impact of climate change. This is the reason why the Federation of Muslim Women's Association, FOMWAN, carried out a tree planting program in Abuja. Toibat Anifawashi has details. Deforestation is a major cause of climate change due to the decreasing number of trees available to capture increasing carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. This is why Tree planting is important. Islamically, it is also a rewardable act, which is encouraged by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. These women, aware of the importance of planting trees, embarked on a tree planting exercise around Utako area of the Federal Capital Territory. The planting of trees is an Islamic heritage because the Prophet ﷺ said, if you plant a tree uh, which benefits even birds and human beings, you get a reward. We are worried with global warming, with environmental challenges, and Form 1 deems it fit to keep the environment green. The purpose of this is to enlighten people 
to be aware of their surrounding, to be conscious of their environment and the importance of tree planting. This gesture, the women say, will go a long way in making the world a better place for all. Toiba Anifooshi, NTA News. And now to religious martyrs, Christians have been challenged to wake up from their slumber and genuinely seek God's face for spiritual and social economic transformation of the country. Evangelist Ogbonna Nicholas, who presided over the 2019 revival series at the Evangelical Church Winning All, also frowned at the level of which the word of God has been diluted by churches. Deborah Micah tells us more. Purity, righteousness, perseverance, love, and forgiveness are some of the virtues of a godly life. Guest preacher at the 2019 Revival Program of Evangelical Church, Winnie All. Equa will say to Evangelist Nicholas Obona noted that these virtues have been lost as Christians get enshrouded in doctrines and no longer follow the scriptures. The commercialization of religion in our day, the merchandising of core values of faith. Religion fail to the ministers, the leaders, the, the, the Christians, even Muslims alike, they fail to tell people the truth. In line with what we confess we believe, it's a time that we emphasize the issue of holiness, righteousness, and especially in Nigeria, that we need men and women of integrity, men and women of holiness, men and women that are blameless. The revival program with the theme Behold, I am doing a new thing is taken from the book of Isaiah 43, verse 19. Some members of the church say revival is a period that God shows up, transforming lives. This program is specially built also to rekindle that belief in Christ. And for other people who have not known Christ, to come into him and accept God as Lord. Jesus as our Lord. As we read even in the book of our Apostles, where the disciples live in a total state of holiness, you could see that during those times that um, the church was able to impact its generation. God is already doing a new thing. He's doing it. It's just for us to perceive it and also key into what the Lord is doing for us. Prayers were offered to God for the revival of families, churches, and the nation. Deborah Micah, NTA News. We now go to Sokoto to join Abdurrahman Usman Jabrila to give us stories they have in that end. Hello, Abdurrahman. Hello, Ruth. Good afternoon. Sokoto has been identified as one of the northern states currently leading in encouraging women and youth participation in governance and politics. This came to the fore at a media briefing by the International Republican Institute and the United States Agency for International Development held in Sokoto. Talata Abdullahi has the report. Struggle for the special recognition for women and the youth in governance and politics has been on for some decades. This struggle has in recent years received the support of USAID and IRI of the American people. The presence of these international organizations has made impact in some northern states, including Sokoto. The current administration in Sokoto State has done wonders for the women for appointing 69 rural women as caretaker counselors, three in each local government, three commissioners, while many serve as permanent secretaries, directors general, and special assistants. The concerned civil society organizations working with the International Republican Institute in Sakoto State are working with politicians, traditional and religious leaders to devise ways of increased political and economic opportunities for women and their youth across the state. However, we are des desirous of intervention from the governor and indeed political leaders and the state towards addressing the the government's concerns of inclusion and economic dependency among women and youth in the states. The media briefing had in attendance leaders of the women and the youth wings of political parties, CSOs, and members of the media family. In Sakoto, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. Zamfara State Police Command has recovered 290 rothal animals in Kotonkuro village in Niger State. The recovered animals stolen from Zamfara some months ago have been returned to Gusau, the state capital. Jamil Ibrahim has more. 
The milestone so far achieved by the ongoing dialogue for a lasting peace in Zamfara State is not limited to securing the release of more than 100 kidnapped persons, but it also covers the recovery of stolen animals for their return to their rightful owners in the spirit of justice and fair play. Accordingly, the Zamfara State Police Command has recovered 290 stolen animals at Kotonkorum in Niger State. The recovered animals including 281 cows, 6 camels, one horse and three donkeys have since been transported to Gusau, the state capital. Three suspects in connection with this crime uh, have been arrested and have since been charged to court for prosecutions. In a related development, the police have also arrested one Sanusi Abdul Qadir of GRA area in Gusau metropolis for allegedly dealing in illegal drugs believed to have given impetus to the state of insecurity in the state. In this case, the police recovered uh, 25 cards of desert palm, 22 wraps of D5, 23 wraps of exile, and the large quantity of drive leaves suspected to be in their hair. The police command appeals for continued support and cooperation from members of the public to the ongoing effort to restore a lasting peace in the state. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. That's our contribution from Sokoto back to Ruth in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Abdurrahman. Now let's take another break. We'll be back, so do stay with us. Television College JAWS announces admissions into two-year diploma programs in film and television production, television engineering, and broadcast journalism. The sale of forms will commence on the 13th of May and run through 30th July 2019. Admission forms can be obtained from all marketing offices, NTA State Capital Stations, Zonal Centers, or at the Office of the Academic Secretary, NTA Television College, Rayfield JAWS. On payment of a non-refundable fee of 7,500 Naira in bank draft in favor of NTA T TV College. Applicants can also obtain the forms through the NTA TV College portal at www.ntatvc.edu.nj. Applicants are required to possess five credits in GCE or SSCE in relevant areas of study in not more than two sittings, including English and mathematics. All properly completed forms attached with photocopies of credentials must be submitted on or before 30th July 2019. For further inquiries, please visit our website at ntatvc.com. Or call 0803 3144 383. NTA TV College, training you to be the best you want to be. Registrar Announcer. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is wrong and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Good to have you there. 
The leadership of the House of Representatives has expressed optimism over the ability of President Muhammad Buhari to address challenges confronting the country. House leader Ado Hassan Dogwa said this after he led APC supporters from Kanu South Senatorial Zone on a visit to Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje. Abdullahi Mustafa reports. The House leader led a high-powered delegation from Kano South Senatorial Zone to thank Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduji for executing development programs and projects in the area. He assured that principal officers in the National Assembly will give all the necessary support to the administration of President Muhammad Buhari in view of his patriotic zeal to take Nigeria to the next level of progress. Nigerians will get quality education. Nigerians will get infrastructural facilities that will enhance our economic development. Nigerians should have confidence in the National Assembly and they should have also confidence in the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by Mr. President. Alhassan Adodogwa appreciated Governor Abla Omar Ganduje for the moral support given to APC stakeholders in Kano State. He reassured that Elders and supporters of the All Progressives Congress from the newly created Rano Emirate will continue to support the administration of Governor Abdullah Omar Ganduji. Governor Abdullah Omar Ganduji expressed optimism that he will not fail Nigerians. Mr. President, His Excellency Muhammad Buhari will conduct the affairs of this country without hindrance. In Kanu, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. And now to sports, Nigeria Hockey Masters end in a boot.